Hi there, I am Rosalind Yukic from Good Morning Girls, and thank you all for joining me this morning. I am talking a little bit quieter this morning, so I hope you can hear me. So if you can hear me, if you can just give me a thumbs up or just say I can hear you. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, my family is still sleeping, and so um, which is why this scope is happening a little bit late. Um, because uh, I've been kind of waiting for them to get up so that I don't wake them up by talking. Um, but it's getting a little bit late now. So, like I said, if you can't hear me, let me know. But if you can, if you could just give me a hum thumbs up or some hearts on the side. You know, if you don't know how to do the hearts, all you have to do is tap on your screen. If you are on a an iPad or a smartphone, um, and that will give me some hearts and that will kind of let me know that you can, you can hear me. And so, cause that's kind of important. So we are, um, like I said, I'm from Good Morning Girls. Um, if you don't know what Good Morning Girls is, it's an online Bible study for women where we, uh, together we are reading through the Bible one chapter at a time. Um, the Good Morning Girls is actually in a break right now. But uh, the study that I lead here in Croatia, uh, Bosnia and Serbia, um, we decided that we wanted to continue studying together even during the break. So we pulled out an old, older study. Uh, we just wrapped up First and Second Peter yesterday. Um, and today we are starting in First John. And so um, as we look at First John, I think what's really interesting is, is that he opens up uh, the book by saying, um, this is what, this is, uh, that which we heard from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Um, welcome, uh, all of you who are joining me this morning, by the way, welcome. And like I said, if you, um, if you're having trouble hearing me this morning, just let me know in the comments, um, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life and he goes on and he keeps talking about this message this thing that they have heard that they have seen that they have looked upon that their hands have touched and he's saying what I'm about to tell you is not something that we just made up this is for real this is something that is that is real we've heard it we have seen it we looked at it our hands our hands have touched it and so he goes to great lengths to reiterate the fact that that what he is about to say is real it's a hundred percent real and so and he's you know why is that important because what he's about to say is what uh, brings us into fellowship with the father and his son Jesus Christ and so what is that message that John is trying to reiterate to us in first uh, John 1. Well, we see what that message is in verse 5. It says, this is the message. So here it is. In verse 5, he gets to the point. He says, um, this is the message which we have heard from him, and we declare to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And that's the message. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And I think it's very important that he uses the word at all he's saying you know there's no darkness you know not even a little bit there's no darkness at all and so um, then he goes on to say this is so that's the message but what does that mean to us so he says you know if we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness so let's stop there for just a moment you know we see that a lot where people say, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, I was born in the South, so that makes me Christian, or, you know, I was born, you know, in a, in a certain religious country, that makes me a Christian. Um, he's saying, you know, if you say you have fellowship with him, or in other words, if you're saying, I'm a Christian, and you walk in darkness, it means you habitually and intentionally do things that you know that the Bible has said you don't do. If you habitually and intentionally do things that you know offend the Lord Jesus Christ, those things that you know nail Jesus Christ to the cross, he says this, you lie. 
that is a that is a strong statement. He's saying he just flat out says you lie, you lie, and you don't practice the truth. He just he doesn't pull any punches. He's saying you know if you say you're a Christian and you habitually and intentionally sin, you're a liar, and you don't practice the truth. That's a hard thing to hear. It's a hard thing to hear because I think we've all at one point or another been there. I know I have. I know there was a point in my Christian life where I said I was a sinner, I was a Christian, and yet I was sinning. I was sinning habitually, and I was sinning intentionally. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I also knew that um, you know, I was going to go out tomorrow and do the very same thing. And he says, you're a liar. You're not a Christian. You can't be a Christian and walk in darkness. You can't be a Christian and um, habitually and intentionally sin because a Christian means that we are following in the footsteps of Christ. And uh, those who follow in the footsteps of Christ will not habitually and intentionally walk in sin. He says, but if you walk in the light. So he's, he's, you know, he's saying, you know, here are those people that do that, but but here's the here's the opposite side. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So he's saying, you know, if you walk in the light as as Jesus Christ is the light of the world, then not only are we gonna have fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, because our hearts are gonna be pure, our lives are gonna be pure. And we are going to have that joy. We are going to have that love and that grace. We're going to be walking in that love and that grace that brings fellowship. And he says, in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. Why is that important? Well, it's important because, you know, even though we walk in the light as he is in the light, there are times when we stumble. There are times when we do things that offend him, not meaning to offend him, it wasn't an intentional sin. It was something that we did. We had a moment of weakness. You know, we, we yelled at our spouse or, you know, we, we said something to our friend that we shouldn't have said and we know that we offended them. And he's saying, look, you know, you're human. You, you, you know, you're, you will uh, at times stumble, you will at time, times offend the Lord Jesus Christ. But the, his blood will cleanse you from that sin because it's not habitual and it's not intentional. Then he goes on to say, as a part of this message, um, the message being that um, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Sorry, my alarm is going off on my phone. I don't want to wake up my family. Um, God is light and, th and in him there is no darkness at all. And so the second point under that is this, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We say we don't have sin. Um, there are those people that just, you know, they they are so full of, of of pride that they say, well, I, you know, I'm not I'm not that I'm not a bad person. Um, and I think this is dangerous because you know while um, you know while we don't want to go around pointing fingers at people, the word does say that there is no one that is good, no, not one. And it is a dangerous thing to say, you know, everyone is good. You know, people are good and. Um, and this comes right at the heart of that statement, of that belief that if we are good enough, we can get to heaven. That God will take the, our good and our bad and he'll weigh it out. And those people that have more good and they have bad, that they'll get to heaven. He's saying, look, if you say you don't have any sin, you're deceiving yourself and the truth is not in you. That is really a powerful statement to say the truth is not in you. If it's not in you, it's not there at all. That means that you're, you are completely and entirely filled with deceit. That is a dangerous place to be because not only are you speaking deceit by saying, I have no sin, you have literally deceived yourself. You actually believe that own lie, that lie that you've told yourself, and the truth is not in you. Um, but he says, if we confess our sins then he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, you know, there's the antithesis of that. The person that says that they have no sin and the one that says, you know what, I am a sinner. I confess my sin. And he says, look, that's all it takes. Confess your sin. Because, because Jesus Christ is faithful 
and he is just and he will forgive you of your sin and he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I love those words. I, I especially love when I see the word all. And then he says, he closes off by saying, if you say that you haven't sinned, not only, not only are you deceiving yourself, not only is the truth not in you, but you are literally calling God a liar. And his word is not in you. Calling him a liar. You know, it's a scary thing when we begin attacking the character of God. Because God will not be mocked. And he said, you, you know, if you say you haven't sinned, you're saying God's a liar. Because God's word says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he says his word is not in you. Because when the word of God is in us, it will reveal in us. It, it is a mirror to us. When we look in God's word, we see a reflection of ourselves. We see a reflection of our own weaknesses. We see a reflection of our own failures, our own shortcomings. And that reflection isn't here to condemn us. That reflection isn't here to, um, to uh, d discourage us. But that reflection is here to draw us, to lead us to the throne of grace so that we can experience that grace and that love of Jesus Christ that leads us to forgiveness. His word must be in us because if his word is not in us, we don't have a way to the Father. We don't have a way to that throne of grace. We need that word in us to reveal our sin, to convict us of that sin, so that we can find that grace, that eternal life that is only found in Jesus Christ. And so that is the message. God is light. That is, a good, that is good news. That is good news because that light will reveal the darkness that is in us and then when that light is there, it cleanses us from that darkness. It, it, uh, it cleanses us from that sin so that we can walk in the grace and in the truth of Jesus Christ. And so I'm glad that you could join me this morning. Again, this is what, I, this is what uh, we are reading for Good Morning Girls. Um, you can find us at goodmorninggirls.org. It is an online Bible study for women. We have Facebook groups and email groups available. We're getting ready to launch a new study um, starting September 7th. Uh, we will be reading the book of Acts together. Women all over the world uh, will be reading the book of Acts together. You can uh, get on to goodmorninggirls.org, and there you will find an online, a, a journal that you can get on Amazon that correlates with our study. Um, that is completely optional. The study is 100% free unless if you want to want to purchase the journal. But like I said, that is optional. But it is uh, it will help you in being able to get everything that you can out of the Word of God as we di dive deep into the Word of God, one chapter at a time, looking at each chapter, looking at what the Word of God is saying to us, and allowing that Word to change our hearts and our lives. So thank you for joining me this morning. Right after this scope, I will be scoping this same lesson in uh, in Croatian. So if you see me pop on again, um, you can know that uh, this that the following periscope is going to be for my ladies here in Croatia, Bosnia, and Serbia. So um, just a heads up on that. So thank you once again for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow.